Meseches Kiddushin Av Tezvav. We begin in the middle of a discussion about four halachas, which it says about an eved who was sold by the Beisdin, and you have a machlokes anayim whether that also applies to an eved that has sold himself. So we saw this machlokes in the Now the Gemara is now in the middle of saying that the reason for the machlokes is that there is a potential exclusion, there's a potential limiting word that says that these each of these halachas applies only in the case of the one who was sold by the Beisdin. Now the Gemara is in the middle of going through them up to the second one. So we start three lines from the bottom of the field. Dalad. We're discussing the halacha of nirza. That is that if the Evan wants to stay longer than 60 years, he has to have his ear have a hole drilled in it with a nail into the door. That it says by one who was sold by the Beisdin. Machlokes between Tanakama and Rabbi Lazar. If that applies to one who was sold, sold himself. So says, what would be the source to limit it to only the case where it's written, which is about the one who was sold by the Beisdin? Because the Pesach says, Rats Adenev es Oznoi Bar Marseya. And he should make a hole in his ear. It says only his ear, but not the ear of someone else, not the ear of someone who was sold by himself. And you ask, what is Rabbi Eliezer who holds, uh, Rabbi Lozer who holds that you can learn from sold him, from sold by the business to sold himself? What is he going to do with that? Pasuk of his night. So where says that is used for Xerashava to teach me that it is the right ear. It's linked to the where it says Ozen in the Pasuk of Taharas Mitzayra. And there it has to be the right ear. You put some of the butt of the carpet in the right ear. This also has to be the right ear. So where does Tanakamba know that from? So where it says that's because. It says Ozen, but here it doesn't say Ozen, it says Ozno. The extra Vav is an extra Jerusha. Now, what is Rabbi Elaz going to do with that? He says that is to teach me that it's only his ear and not her ear, Ozno, meaning it only applies to an Evid, and Amavri doesn't have this Parsha of Ritzia. Has the other opinion know that? It learns from the fact that it says Vim Yem or Evid. If the Evid says, I want to stay, it's specific to the Evid, not to the Oman. The other one says, that is need. You need that possibly to teach me that the Evid has to say it while he's still an Evid. He can't say it after he's already become not an Evid, after his term of Avdus has expired. The other one learns that from the fact that it says Ha Evid with an extra hay, and the first opinion says you don't make drushes from an extra hay. The one moves on to the next halacha, which is that of Hanukkah, that the master has to give a gift to the Evid when he leaves. That says only by the one who's sold by the Beisdin. According to the Tanakhama, that does not apply to the one who sells himself. How, how do we see that limitation? So the Lord says that's because it says Hanuk, Tanuk, Loi, it's only to him, but not to someone else, not to the one who sold himself. What does Rabbi Lazar hold? He says that that's needed, that it's only given to him, and it's not given to his inheritors. If he dies before he collects the Hanaka, his inheritors don't collect it. So Mar says, why should that be? He's called a Sakhir, he's called an earner, he's called a hired hand, and the halacha is that if you don't pay a hired individual before he dies, you pay his inheritor. So you should give the Hanaka to his inheritors. So Mar says, you're right. So we have to say the lies with something else. It's to teach that you will not give his inheritor Although you may give the Hanukkah to his inheritor, if you didn't give it to him, you don't give it to the one that he owes money to. So if the Evid owes money to Reuven, then you can't, the Adon can't be forced to pay the Hanukkah to Reuven. And that's as opposed to generally where this Shita holds, you would do that. And that's what's called Shibuddha Derb Nasan. If Reuven owes money to Shimon and Shimon owes money to Levi, Levi could come direct to Reuven and collect. So here the Bachayv cannot collect the Hanukkah if the Evid owes money to him. Now, the other one, where is he learned that from? The Gemara says, it's simple, he does not hold Rabbi Nassim, he holds it, there's never such a thing, and therefore you don't have to have such a limut. The Gemara just brings the source of Rabbi Nassim's halacha, it says, Rabbi Nassim la'asher osham loy, to include the one who he owes. The Gemara now goes to the fourth halacha, and that's the halacha that a master is allowed to give a shifcha kananis to his Evid, every, to marry her to him and keep the children. So the Gemara says, this halacha applies only to one who was sold by Beisdin, according to the Tanakama, and that's because it says, Imadayin of Yitain, loy isha, only to him, only loy, but not to the Mecher Atzman, not to one who sells himself. So where does Rabbi Elizabeth learn that? It applies even by the Mecher Atzman. So the Gemara says, that's because it says, what does he do with loy? So loy is Baal Karcha, it's against his will, he can force him to marry that Shekha Kanas, whether he wants to or not. How does the other one know that? That's because the Puzzle says, Mishnah Schar Sachir, um, where it says, Ki Mishnah Schar Sachir, Avad Chashi Shanam, Bevrach Hashem, Bekech HaBachal Asher Taseh, and we have a Bryce that says, Mishnah Schar Sachir, makes it sound like he is a hired worker, but a hired worker should only work during the 
day, and Eved Ivri works at night. So the Gemara says, no, and Eved Ivri doesn't work at night. And Eved Ivri, uh, could you even dream that he works at night? We know that it says, Ki imach. he has to be imach, he has to be with you. Imach be Michael, imach be Mishnah, he has to be invited to your food, invited to your drink, and invited to everything else you do. And Rav Yitzchak says, you even learn from there, you have to give him a wife, you have to give him a shifcha kenanis. So there's your source that he can give him a shifcha kenanis. So says, that... The other one would say that that's not a source that it can be Val Karchai. That's just a source that you can, you're allowed to marry a Shefcha Kanadis him, that you should marry a Shefcha Kanadis him, but not that you can force him to if he does not want to. The Gemara now says so then we need to find someone who does not hold of a Drasha, Sachir, Sachir, linking one who's sold by the basin to one who sells himself. That is, we've been trying to find that there's a Machagis whether. There is such a drasha that you could learn all the lachas from one to the other, from one type of evid to the other t- type of evid. Now, we had originally said on the last stop, these four halachos, the machok is as to whether they, were, they apply by the evid who sells himself as well as the evid who sold by the biz. And the reason there's that machok is because the machok is over what do you have this drasha, sacher, sacher. But the Gemara has just kept finished saying there is no machok is over that in this brisa. Everyone agrees that there is a lima sacher sacher. You could learn the halachos from one type of evet to the other type of evet. The only problem is, the only machlekes is, is there a specific meat or not? And then now that we're saying what we said earlier, that there is someone out there who holds that there's no lima sacher sacher. There is no link to learn from one type of evet to the other. Who is that opinion? So the Mur is not going to go looking for that. So Mur quotes a Brisa discussing the halacha of returning home at Yoival. That is, that an evet ends his service and he goes home at Yevil. Now, the there is a pasuk says v'shavel mishpachtei ve'el achuzas of lisa of yashav that he goes home by Yevil. Now, the Gemara says, who are we referring to here? If referring to someone who sells himself, someone who sells himself does not have a six-year limit, as we said earlier. Six years only says by one who sold by the basedin. That's a machlok is about that, but we're with the understanding here at best that there is no limit. So if it's someone who sells himself, we already have a Pasuk earlier that says that he goes home at Yevil. Like it says, Ajnas Hayevil Yavadimach. So what then is this referring to? So it has to be referring to uh, one who was sold by the Beisdin. He has a six year limit. Now, if it's talking about after his Nirza, after he already extended past the six years, we have a source for that also. Umar doesn't give it, Rashi doesn't give it here either. The Umar will bring it later. But there is a different source that he ends at Yevus. We must be talking about somebody within his six years. Within his six years, if he hits Yevus in the middle, he ends early. So, Umar, why do you need a source for that? Why don't you learn that from the one who sells himself? He also ends early. He ends at any time he hits the Yevil mark, even if it's early, even if it's in year one. So the Gemara says, obviously then, this opinion, this Bryce, that holds you cannot learn anything from a person who sold himself to someone who's sold by the Bezin. does not hold of the Joshua of Sacher Sacher. So the Gemara says, no, maybe not. Maybe he does hold generally of the Joshua Sacher Sacher, but this halacha you can't learn. And the reason you can't learn is because there's a special Chumrah on the one who's sold by the Bezin, because he did an Esther, he stole something in order to get there. So perhaps he would not have that leniency to go home early. The Gemara now takes a detour, the Gemara goes into what is the source of Nirza? We said that a person in Eved who was sold by the Vezdin and he already did his six years and he extended his Avdus further, that we know that when Yevil arrives, he goes free. We already said that somewhere. Where is that somewhere? So Lord goes to Raisa, from a Pasuk that's not talking about Avadim, talking about Yevil, and it says, V'shaftim ish al chuzas al mishpach tashuv, and a man goes back to his inheritance. Who is this going back? What is this referring to over here? Says the Gemara, what, let's go through the three options again. If we're talking about somebody who sells himself, where it doesn't make a difference what year it is, we already said that. We already have a... Um, Pasuk for that, like we quoted earlier. If it's talking about one who was sold by the based in, and it's within his first six years, we already have a Pasuk for that also. That's what we just brought. Now we just had the Limud Vishab al So it must be talking about after the extension of six years, it must be talking about a Nirza, and that he ends when Yevil arrives. So how do you know? How do you know that this Pasuk is talking about after he extended? And the Pasuk of Bishop al is talking about before he extended. Maybe switch it. You said this is, has to be because you already have one for that. And on that one, you said it has to be because you already have one for this. So how do you know which one's which? So it says, because here it says ish. 
in first to an ish and says that vishavtem ish al chuzasai. An ish implies that something that it only implies by men, not something which applies by women. What is that? That's near to Rusia, the extending the hole in the ear only applies to an ever, it doesn't apply to an ama, and therefore this pasuk is talking about an extension. Now, the Gemara asks, why do I need a Pasuk for both of them? Why do I need a separate source for before the extension and after the extension? Why should it be a difference? So Gemara says, here's the reason. If you would have only said before the extension, I may say that if he already extended, then he does not go free when Yevla arrives because he, we w- will find him, we'll knas him. And that's because it's an Avera to extend. Like we said, you should not be extending. You should be an Evita Kaddish Baruch not an Evita people. And therefore, maybe we would not allow him to go free when Yevla arrives. Now, on the other hand, if we would have only said that he goes free at Yevla, when he's extended, that might be because he already served his obligation of six years to his master. How do we know that it cuts off even if he hasn't fulfilled the six years that he owes the master? Yeah, therefore you need a Pusik for that as well. Okay, so now you need a Pusik for both of them. Now the has another question. Why, when the Torah describes that he serves to Yevil, it says that he serves La'ilam, he serves forever. And we know that that doesn't mean forever, it only means Yevil, yeah, because then it says Vishaftim. So why do you have to say both? Why do you have to have this contradiction of saying he serves forever and he serves until Yevil? Yeah. Answers the Gemara, I have to say La'ilam, because if I would have just said Vishaftim, then I think that he goes home as soon as he finishes six years. Not only does he go home when he finish, when Yevil arrives, but he goes home after a second term of six years ends. After all, why should the second term of service be any longer than the first term of service? Therefore, you have to say La'ilam that it goes extends, it goes past, it goes forever. And once you're saying that, you have to make it clear that it never, that forever is not real forever, forever is only until Yevil. Therefore, we have to tell you Vishaftim, no, not forever. You do go back when something happens, when Arrives. Okay, the Gemara returns to its search for the one who does not hold of the Joshua Sacher Sacher, linking an Eved who sells himself to an Eved who is sold by the Bezdin to learn the Lachas from one to the other. The Gemara says that it's Rebbe, and Rebbe is talking about an Eved who is sold to an Eved Kechavim. So there's a special Lacha written by an Eved sold to an Eved Kechavim that he can be redeemed by his relatives. His relatives can come and give money and redeem him. Says Rebbe, he cannot be redeemed through normal methods. That is the only method that works for an Evan Sultan. He does not go free after six years. Where do you see that? So Rebbe says, you would have said that there's a Kaval Chaimer from a regular Evan. A regular Evan who sold to Yisrael does not have the Parsha of being redeemed by relatives. The Torah doesn't say it there yet. He's redeemed He's freed after six years. So you see, freeing after six years is stronger than being redeemed by relatives. So this person, this Evan who is sold to Evan who has the pressure of being redeemed by relatives, should certainly be redeemed through six years. It would have been a Kavachem that says that six years should apply to him, and therefore it says, Be'ele. It says, in you go, Be'ele. Only these are the only these only these are the things that can redeem this Evan who sold to Evan not uh, the classic six years. So now the Gemara says, let's analyze this here for a second. How does Rebbe know that the uh, parsha of the uh, concept of being redeemed by relatives does not apply to a standard Evet? How does he know that it applies only to an Evet who sold to an Evet Kichavim? That's where the Torah says it, but if you have a limit Sacher Sacher, you should learn it to the regular Evet as well. And then your Kavachamer wouldn't make any sense. So obviously... He does not hold the belief in Sacher Sacher, and that's why he says that a regular Eved who is sold to Yisrael does not have any partial being redeemed by relatives. So Mara says, not necessarily. There'll be a different explanation. Really, he does hold of Sacher Sacher, but here there's an exception. That's because it says, Yigolenu, the Torah says, Yigolenu, only him, but not someone else, and not someone who was sold to Yisrael. The Gemara now goes a bit more deeper into the halacha of an Evet who sold to an Evet Kechavim. We see that Rebbe says that he can't be redeemed, he doesn't go free after six years. It says Gemara, there are two times who argue on him, and that's Rebbe Yisrael Glidia and Rebbe Akiva. And Gemara quotes a bris, so Rebbe Yisrael Glidia and Rebbe Akiva use the Pasuk Be'ele to teach me something else, not to teach me this limitation. And therefore they... They don't have the same drasha, they actually have opposite drashas, but since they use for something else, they don't hold that there's a restriction not allowing someone who was sold to whenever he them to go free after after six years, so therefore they hold that he does go free after six years. Now, what are B.S.A. Gli and Rabbi Kiva discussing? They're discussing when you have the parasha of Geula of relatives as opposed to strangers, of someone who was sold to whenever What's the difference between the relatives and the strangers? What is it, when the Torah talks about the special halacha of being redeemed by relatives? How is it different? So we have inverted opinions here. And basically, Aglili says the relatives redeem him; he goes free. He doesn't belong to them; he goes free. 
anyone else who redeems him, he belongs to them. And then he has to be subservient to them. Rabbi Kiva says the opposite. The relatives redeem him, he works for them. Anybody else redeems him, he goes free. Now, they're both learning out of the Pasuk of Be'ele, that there's something different about the relatives, the Be'ele. The question is, what is the difference here between Rabbi Kiva and Rabbi Zegli? How do they have different Limudim? So, what's the difference between their Limudim? So, the Gemara first brings Rabbi Zegli. It says, because the Pasuk says, Vim go Be'ele, if the Ela, Ela is referring to redemption of relatives, if you don't have that, then he goes free by Yaival. So it clearly shows that if he's redeemed by someone else, not by the relatives, not by the Ayla, he's still in subservitude. He's still a he's is still in evidence until Yaival. So clearly then the difference is, is that someone else who redeems he works for, and the relative who redeems he does not work for. Rabbi Kiva says it's the opposite. You read it as in Lo Yigo Elab Ayla. If he doesn't go out in any other way, only if he goes out this way, only if he's redeemed by relatives, that is where he's freed by Yaival. And that's only where the relative is the one who redeemed him, is he a servant until Yaival. Otherwise, he's completely free. So the Gemara rejects this chat. The Gemara says that Rebezi Haglili's Taina is obvious. It doesn't say Ella. It says Be'ela. It doesn't say only Be'ela. So Mar therefore looks for a different chat to explain the difference. This chat comes from the Pasuk, Oi doi doi, oi ben doi doi yigalenu, oi mishar besar mi mishpach doi yigalenu. All that is talking about a relative redeeming him. And then it says, Oi he siga yodai, that, or that he redeems himself. And then it says, Vinegal, that's talking about where any other random person redeems him. So this Pasuk therefore talks about three types of redemption from the Akam. The first one is a relative. The second one is he himself, and the third one is a random other individual. So as the Gemara, the Machlekes is, the middle one teaches me the characteristics of the one before it or of the one after it. The middle one where he's redeeming himself, obviously he's going free. He doesn't redeem himself and then serve anybody. So the question is, do you say that Mikra Nidrash Lefanov or Laachov? That it's teaching me the characteristic of the relative who redeems him, that that is also free. But the one that is later, where it is any other random individual, there he has to serve him. That would be Rebbe Seaglili. Or is it the opposite? Is it Mikra Nidrash Laachov that's going on the next thing that follows, and it's teaching us that someone else redeems him, that's where he goes free. But in the beginning, where it's a relative, that's where he has to serve him. So that is the Machlech Zimmer wants to say. So the Gemara says, then what is the Be'ela for? We just said before that this whole drasha of Be'ela is why we argued on Rebbe. So what's the Be'ela for? So the Gemara says, if not for Be'ela, I would have said that the Pasuk in the middle is going on both before and after. That the Mikra is Neder Shlifanov and L'Achrav. Therefore, I need Be'ela to teach me that it's only one or the other, and the Mechlekes is which one. So Mer says, then we're back to the original Kasha. He said, why did Rabbi Kiva decide which one the Be'ela should refer to? The Be'ela Drasha, we understood how it works according to Be'ela Glili. We didn't understand it according to Rabbi Kiva, so we still haven't explained that. So it says the Gemara, our final shot, actually the Mechlekes of Be'ela and Be'ela Glili is in logic. Rabbi Yaisa Glili says, it's logical to say that the relatives should be the one that would set him free, because if the Others are the ones.